Lord, in prayer now. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for today. Lord, we've got some prayer requests uh, to lift up. And Lord, I'm, I'm going to start with the uh, the spiritual one right now. Uh, to, to, to lead off, I pray for the uh, the Holy Spirit to work in the people that uh, that Don and, and Tammy had an opportunity to witness to. Uh, uh, neighbors and, and uh, relatives, uh, young people that they've not seen in a while. And Lord, the topic was angels, but they, uh, Lord, your, your Holy Spirit opened the door to talk about the angels announcing the birth of Jesus Christ. So we pray that your Spirit continues to work in them and, and uh, <clears throat> that there'll, there'll be some fruit, that they'd ask more questions and uh, ask somebody about what they need to do to be saved. And so we thank you for the, the, the testimony there. We pray for, for Nancy with her. Uh, God bless her issues and her heart issues. Lord, I pray that the, uh, as far as the, the heart issues go, that the tests come back negative and it was just a just a fluke. Uh, Lord, I know she does have gallbladder issues, and we just uh, Lord pray that you supernaturally intervene there for that. And uh, Lord, we want to lift up on this. Perry is having surgery Friday. I, I know she's very concerned about this. So Father, I pray that you just give her the peace that she needs right now. Uh, Lord, between now and, and uh, Friday, give her a good night's sleep Friday night. And, uh, Lord, allow her to be at peace uh, Friday during the surgery. Lord, I know I'm going to be there to pray with her before Tammy and I head out. And I think Stuart's planning on being there. And I know we'll have folks following up on her. But, Father, just pray that you give her the peace and that it's a successful surgery and, and uh, that she's back home and doing what you want her to do uh, in, in a short period of time. And, Father, I pray you open our hearts and souls and minds right now as we continue on in our study of the book of Jude. And uh, Lord, just teach us today what you have us to, to learn. And uh, uh, just use this to transform us more into the image of Jesus. We ask in his name. Amen. 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 Pam and Larry, good to see you. Patrice is here with us. I'll be turning your Bibles to Jude chapter 1. <clears throat> so everybody picks up on that. That's uh, the only chapter in there. Yeah. I tell you what, I had planned on going through, going up from verse three to verse thirteen tonight. But as I was studying this, Tina Smith, there. Hey, you, I don't know if you caught us praying, praying for your mom. Uh, but as I was studying and taking my notes, uh, as far I, as far as I got was verse seven. So uh, what we'll do is we'll start out with verse three and Elaine, if you want to read, and we'll just go around the room to, uh, to, to as far as verse seven goes. I understand. Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. Well, certain men have crept in un unnoticed who long ago were locked out for this condemnation. Ungodly men who turned the grace of our God unto, into lewdness and denied the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels who do not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. What verse are we on? Seven. Seven. Six. Well, as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Okay, okay, thank you. Now this, remember Jude, much like Colossians that we're going through on Sunday mornings, uh, the book of Jude is about contending for the faith. And uh, Jude, just a little bit of a review, or, or part of verse three, uh, most scholars believe he had intended on writing about something different than what he than what he eventually wrote uh, as he's talking about you know he says i was very diligent to write to you concerning the common salvation but i found it necessary to write basically something else and, and what he's going to be talking about are the false teachers and the the, the gnostics the same thing that uh, paul's writing about in colossians uh, and false teachers and uh, 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 
uh, I wanted to say Luke, Jude in this short passage is going to give us three examples of how God dealt with false teachers, showing us that uh, as we get into this in the, the, the next meeting, that God doesn't change. What God says is bad, was bad back then, is bad now. What was sin then is sin now. God dealt with false teachers then, he's gonna deal with false teachers now. But he starts out by saying that I was, I was diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation. That word uh, common there uh, comes from the Greek word koinos. Now, does anybody rem uh, think of, uh, of another usage of that, of that word? Koinonia. Koinonia. And what does that mean? Being together, basically. Be yeah, being together, being in common. You know, having things together in common. And so what he's talking about here it, 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 it is the message of salvation is common. It's, it's equal and available to everybody. It's the same for everybody. God doesn't tell one person, well, you've got to get saved this way, or another person, well, you've got to get saved that way. False teachers today will try to tell us, oh, well, all roads lead to God, you know. Uh, Greg Laurie, who's a, a, a pastor out in California, he says, you know what? I will agree with people. All paths lead to God, but what you got to be mindful of is what happens once you get to God. Because <laughs> if you don't go to Him His way, there's going to be there's going to be a judgment for it. The 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 common way of salvation is the cross of Jesus Christ, and we're all common. We're all equal at the foot of the cross. And again, he says, I found it necessary. I, to write you exhorting, exhorting, exhorting you, you know. Again, he had intended to write one thing, but under the under the compulsion, if you will, of the Holy Spirit, he was going to write about something else that he, that he felt under the leadership of the Holy Spirit was a whole lot more important than whatever it was he was he he, he had originally intended to write. He says, I'm going to be exhorting you that you contend earnestly for the faith. Contend, that word contend comes from a Greek word that means to agonize over with intensity and determination. You know, we are called to contend for the faith. Now, keep in mind, as we were talking about with, uh, uh, <clears throat> what we were talking about, about earlier, uh, with, with, uh, uh, Oh my goodness! <clears throat> With your your witnessing to your your friends from Florida, you know we're we're not called. Neither can we save people, but we're called to defend the faith. And, and and when I say defend the faith, I don't mean arguing with people. We're we're called, if you will, to present our case like a lawyer would. You know, the, the prosecuting attorney is going to lay the case out. Uh, uh, for, for what he's what he's prosecuting. The defense attorney is going to lay his, his case out. That's all we're called to do. You know, I, I, was it Philippians? One of the letters Paul talked about, I I planted Apollos water, and I think somebody else reaped the you know reaped the harvest. You know, sometimes we may witness the people and we don't see we don't see the fruit of that. It, 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 it takes a while, but we're still called to defend, to defend the faith. Uh, he, he, he says, I, I wrote, I, I missed a part. He said, I, I, it's necessary to write exhorting you. What does that word exhort mean? We're, we're called to, we're called to exhort something. Encourage. Yeah, yeah. It means to address something, to encourage, but even more than that, so even to the point of you to beg, you know, to, to be that, that, uh, 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 uh uh, adamant about it. You know, apostasy was rearing its ugly head in the church some 30 years after Jesus walked the earth. And so uh, it, it was a, to, to, to Jude, it was a needful, it was a divine compulsion for him to write about this issue for, for the, the believers to contend to the faith because of what was going on in the church. So he says, you need to contend earnestly for the faith which was once delivered for all. And, 
And again, that, that, that kind of ties back to common salvation. It was once delivered for all. Uh, Titus 1 4, Paul writes to Titus, my own son, after the common faith. Yeah. Common yeah. Faith. yeah. Yeah. It was delivered once and for all. The gospel and the way of salvation was given once. You know, I think it's 2 Timothy that there's one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. You know, it was given once, uh, once and for all, in the work and in the person of Jesus Christ, the living word, the logos, who gave us the logos written word. It's not to be added to, it's not to be subtracted from, it's not to be changed. And that is what was going on with the Gnostics. Some were adding to it. Well, it's Jesus plus works. You know, the, the, the Jews, the, the Jewish zealots were like that. Well, yeah, Jesus was the Messiah, but he was a Jewish Messiah. Therefore, you have to keep the law, which the whole point of the law was to teach us that we can't keep the law. You know, uh, some wanted to change it. That's what the mystics, the, the mystic part of the Gnostics were doing. Hey, Miss Sandy, Sandy Felt is with us. Uh, and it's not to be subtracted from or changed. You know, there were folks that were trying to change. Uh, you know, that's where you get some of the some of these uh, books that weren't from the Bible, like the, the the Gospel of Judas and 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 different things like that. They were books that were people were trying to add to or trying to change uh, or even subtract from the Gospel. Uh, we, uh, Revelation twenty two eighteen. Uh, John wrote, or J John through Jesus wrote, for I testify for who. To everyone who hears these words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in the book. And by silence, whoever takes away from the book is going to, going to be judged too. And it doesn't matter who or what teaches it. Because in Galatians 1.8, Paul wrote, But if even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you, then what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Why did Paul say that? Because he tells us in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. And so, you know, Paul's saying it doesn't matter if an angel comes to you. If he's preaching a different gospel, don't believe it. You know, and, and I think we touched on this uh, the last time we met about some of these this was popular back in the 80s, these books and these movies about, about the light and people seeing, seeing angels and, and, and all that stuff. And, and they were told, well, you need, to, you need to go back. You know, how much of that is true? I don't know. We've got to compare the stories based on what the scriptures say. I think I shared there was one story where a guy claimed that the angel in the light told him to, to go back and tell everybody that everybody's going to heaven. Well, based on the scripture, that was not biblical. That was that was Satan or one of his demons disguising themselves as an angel of light. You know, because the Bible tells us that not everybody's going to heaven. You know. Any questions or comments on uh, 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 on verse three? Maybe you guys have gotten here in your Bibles. Okay. I'm sorry? I got a lot of commentary, but you hit on most of them right there. Okay. You know, like it's <clears throat> the Bible is complete, scripture is complete. You don't have to add or take away from it and that kind of stuff. And, and see, we've got, again, just to show you that it still goes on these in this day and age. This day and age, meaning 1800s up until now, you've got Joseph Smith that supposedly looked into a bag or, or, or a hat with different colored crystals in it and was it the angel Maroni? I think is the, the name Maroni. Maroni. Yeah, which was which you don't read in the Bible anywhere. You know, gave him a word. Uh, who was it that was the founder of the Jehovah Witnesses? Uh, Russell. Yeah, yeah, Taz Russell, I think, is what his nickname was. You know, he supposedly got a word from God too. You know. Uh, well, theirs has changed because originally they were all going to be part of the 144,000 and all that kind of good yeah. stuff, which either they found out was wrong or they decided there were too many of them and they couldn't all be part of the Right. Of the right. Yeah. So see, it goes on even today, people changing. And it's not and it's not just cults that are changing it. There are, are 
for lack of a better term, churches that at one time were solid in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ have, have, have watered it down. You know, I'm going to get into that here in a, in, in a, in a, in a couple minutes. Uh, moving on to verse 4, if nobody has anything else, it says, For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago marked who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, he says certain men. Well, who are those certain men? Again, we were, we, we've been talking about them both here and on and on uh, Sunday mornings. The, the, the Gnostics, the false teachers, the, 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 the heretics. He says they've crept in. That crept in comes from a Greek word, per Parents do know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, and it means to sneak in alongside. See, these false teachers, it's not like they busted the doors of the church down, but even today, it's not like they bust the doors of a church down and say, hey, your pastor's wrong, and, and I'm right, and let me tell you how it, how it really is. They sneak in, they slide in alongside, they, they look like they believe what the church has historically believed, but when they get the opportunity, they, they, they move further and further and further away from the gospel. 1 Peter 2.1 speaks of false prophets and false teachers, and it's not, according to Peter, it wasn't a, 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 an if, it was about when, because he speaks of false teachers and false prophets that will sneak into the church. And so that begs the question for us today, you know, how are these people allowed to sneak in? It's because we Christians are either asleep at the wheel or we're, we're ignorant. And what I mean by ignorant is we don't know our Bible as well as we should so that we can point these things out. And, and guys, I want to point out that there's, to, to me at least, there's a difference between a false teacher and somebody who has a slightly different interpretation, you know. Uh, yeah, questioning is not really what we're talking about here. Yeah. They're talking yeah. about somebody who's decided that they've made up their mind, they're going to tell everybody else that their mind is correct. Uh, were, okay. yeah. 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 were these individuals who came in privately, and even in Galatians, Paul said, False brethren, unawares, brought in privately to spy out our liberty in Christ Jesus. Were these Jewish? These were Jewish people holding to the old Jewish religion that were still more or less doing what Saul was doing. Maybe not to the extent of the persecution, but trying to steer the church away from the grace of Christ. Yes, and, 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 and yes. more accurate. Yeah. And, and, it, and it wasn't just, if you will, the the, uh, the Judaizers. Uh, Y'all help me. I can't remember his name, but there was a, I think his name was Simon. And when he saw Peter had the, had the gift of being able to, to heal or cast demons out or something like that, and, and, and it said he was a follower, but he wanted he wanted to teach me and teach me to do that and he even offered money I'll give you money. And he was a gentleman. Yeah, yeah, and and, and so it it, 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 it it creeped in from everywhere, you know. Uh, the, 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 two, the two biggest categories were the Judaizers, uh, the, the the ones that still follow the, the, the Jewish the, the new the new Christ. Yeah, church Christ based gospel yeah. Paul. Yeah. And some of the and, and the other group were the Gentiles or, or those that were the Greeks, the Romans that followed, followed, followed that. Gotcha. Uh, uh, again, you know, they, they, they slept in because the saints were asleep or they didn't know their, their Bible good enough. You know, we need to be like the Bereans in Acts chapter 17 uh, when, when Paul and Silas preached to them. Severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, when Paul and Silas preached to them, what did they do? They, they, they and I'm paraphrasing, they, they basically said, well, what you're saying sounds good, but we're going to go back to the scriptures to verify what you're saying is the truth. And you guys haven't probably haven't heard me say this since you've been here, but I, I you know, I tell folks that, that I'm like, I, I'm glad people believe what I'm preaching, but I'm, I'm, I'm like that old, that, that old uh, 1980s Cold Warrior prophet Ronald Reagan, trust but verify. Yeah. I appreciate that you trust what I'm saying, 
but I don't have a problem with you going back and verifying by the scripture that what I'm saying is by the scripture. Is that by is that what the Bible means when it says test the spirit? Yes, absolutely. You know, whatever if you if you're seeing something taught, something preached, or even if you supposedly get a word, you know, you feel like God's speaking to you. Mm -hmm. Uh you know, verified by the scriptures. Yeah, you know, that's like I I, I know I, I've worn this one out. You know, I, I, I knew a couple one time that they claimed that they were they were they were married and they were fooling around on their spouses and they claimed that God wanted them to get divorced and, 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 and marry the person they were fooling around with. God's never gonna tell you that. You know. And the thing is the Bible will verify the Bible. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, the, the Bible, and, and Alan and I have been talking a little, bit, a little bit about this when it comes to the commentaries. There are some good commentaries out there, but the Bible is the best commentary on the Bible. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? I mean, all, I, of, all of the, the early preachers, and you know, Peter, Paul, and all of these people, they didn't have a commentary. No. Everything they had was yeah. their experiences. They had each other in their first-hand experiences. Yeah, first yeah. And, and the scriptures, and it was a whole lot tougher uh, uh, and it was a whole lot tougher because other than the books being separated, you didn't have them separated chapter and verse. No, and they were just letters, basically. Yeah, yeah. Back and forth. And and getting around was a whole lot harder then. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. Their congregating was not easy. But, but kind of, and, I, and I'm going to chase a rabbit here tonight, but I, I think it's appropriate. That might beg the question, well, how do we know that the Bible we've got is accurate? You know, they have found ancient sites where copies, yeah, manuscript copies that had mistakes in them were tossed out. From my studies, the, 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 the scribes that wrote or that, that copied the earliest mm -hmm. manuscripts, they knew how many letters were to be on the page, how many words were to be on the page. They even knew what word was supposed to be dead center in the middle of the page. Mm -hmm. And so as they proofread those things, if it didn't line up, they tossed that out, go back to the to the manuscript and recopy it again. Yeah. So so there are, are tons of copies that were bad that we found in, in trash heaps. Yeah, and they didn't have any white out. So nope. There was a mistake on the page, the whole page went. Yep. 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 Yeah. But getting you're getting back to this, you know, uh, the Bereans verified Paul and Silas by the scripture. We need to verify everything by the scripture. Today, liberalism, secularism, DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and all kinds of things have crept into the church. And in some of yeah, and, and in some denominations, the point where the gospel of Jesus Christ is no longer preached, yes. but it's a, a social gospel. It's an all-inclusive gospel. You know, if somebody tells me that the gospel is inclusive, I'll say, yeah, you're absolutely right. The gospel is inclusive in that whosoever will come will be saved, but it's exclusive in the fact that if you don't come according to the way Jesus said. And you don't want to live out your Christianity the way Christ says it's to, to be lived out in the Bible, then no, you're you're excluded. Yeah. We don't come in and make up the rules. That's right. It says uh, that more than once in Scripture. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and so he goes on to say that these guys were marked out for this condemnation. You know. Uh, uh, again, marked out, you know, meaning it, what they were teaching was no surprise to God. He knew in eternity past what these guys were going to be doing. But he also had them marked out for judgment and condemnation because he knew that their hearts weren't going to change. You know, uh, he says that they're ungodly men. They're they're unsaved. And and, and see, we need, we need to be careful about that. Everybody that claims to be a Christian isn't a Christian. That's why lots of times now I will refer to us as Christ followers as opposed to Christians because there are people that believe there are other ways to salvation but call themselves Christians. There are people that claim you can live ungodly, perverted lifestyles, but you're, you're still a Christian if you trusted in Jesus. You know, they, and, and not just perverted lifestyles, but they'll live the same kind of life they lived before they supposedly came to Christ. Oh, well, I'm a Christian. I'm saved. No, you're not. You maybe have got, got a little bit of religion, 
But if we, you know, the, the old saying, if your salvation hasn't changed you, you've got, you, you need to change your salvation. You gotta take off the old clothes and put on the new clothes. Exactly, exactly. And so God, you know, God said that these guys, uh, that, 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 that these guys, that, that they're ungodly men. And he, and he goes on to say that they, uh, uh, the, you know, ungodly being unsaved, what is First Timothy 3, 5 says, that there are people that have a form of godliness, but denying its power. Yeah. And it wasn't back at that time, and even today, it isn't just men. Because if you remember in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, Jesus, when he wrote to the church at Thyatira, he spoke about a woman by the name of Jezebel who claimed to be a prophet that was teaching and seducing people in the church. Now, from what I understand about that word seducing, it wasn't just seducing the church to believe false things. She was seducing some of the men in the church to commit immoral acts with her. Because that's what they did in the temples. Is that correct? Exactly. Exactly. You know, a lot, a lot of worship in the temples had to do with immoral sex and orgies. Christian temples. Yeah. A yeah, the pagans. Apollo, worshiping Apollo and all this other kind of good stuff. Yeah. yeah. In our study in Hebrews, we had people who tasted. Yeah. 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 Would be worse for them because mm -hmm. they, they didn't partake in yeah. all the yeah. yeah. It wasn't just right. sexual perversion, a lot of it was uh, drug perversion, too. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But the people then and even now deny the essential doctrines of Christianity. In other words, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and the only way to get to God. And he goes on to say that they, they turn the grace of our God into lewdness. Yeah, they taught indecent, kind of what we've already touched on. They, they taught uh, indecency, lack of moral restraint. Uh, you know, their attitude was, well, you've been saved by grace so that you should live however you want to because the greater your sin, the greater the grace of God looks because he's forgiven you for this. Do you think that what? has anything to do with the difference between making decisions based on facts and based on feelings? What was the first part of that question? Do you think that these discussions, this discussion that we're having, the differences between the two, has anything to do with facts based or, or feelings? Oh, well, I mean, a little bit of both because they were, the, the, the false teachers were denying the facts right. and were basing everything on feelings. Because that's what I think yeah. is going on in the church today. A lot of the churches are geared towards making somebody feel good yeah. Oh, yeah. versus yeah. basing yeah. their doctrine on the fact. Well, see, in, 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 the, in the 80s in the 80s and 90s, a, a big movement in the church was felt needs. Mm -hmm. if, if we can address people's felt needs, then we can show them the grace of God, and that might cause them to, to accept Jesus. I, I can understand felt needs, but I, I tend to, to like the, the, the AA, Alcoholics Anonymous way of doing things. But, but before you... But, you got to admit you have a problem before you can deal hey, with it. You're welcome. Problem. Your sin yeah. is not welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. We love you, but exactly, exactly. You know, and, and and a lot of churches, not a whole lot, but a lot of churches are getting back to we we need to show people that are lost first, and then we deal with the the, the, the felt needs. Uh, now, and to me, there's a difference between spiritual needs. I mean, felt needs. And material needs. You know, if we have somebody coming to our church and they need some help, we're going to show them the love of Jesus Christ by the best that we can, providing for those material needs. Going back to James, you know, what good does it do to tell somebody God bless you and they walk away hungry and naked? You know. And, and as we show them the love, uh, whether it be materially or fellowshipally, <laughs> you know, they they see the love of God. If they're lost, they see the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm a sinner in need of a savior, and, and I want what these folks have got, you know. And that's not what was going on then, and in, in a lot of so-called churches, that's not uh, that's not what is what is is going on now, you know. Uh, that that part about what well, you, you know, sin as much as you can because it makes God's grace look greater. Paul addressed that in Romans 6.15, and I'm paraphrasing. He says, so should we sin so that God's grace abounds? He said, forbid it not. You know, in other words, no, don't let that happen. You know, 
They, they got a word for that, hypocrite. <laughs> you know, you, you've heard me use this analogy before. If, if I'm in church on Sunday morning preaching to you guys, you've got to be faithful to your wife and, and don't get drunk and all these things. And 15 minutes after church is over with, you see me down here at the food line with a 12 pack under my arm and a, a woman that's not Tammy around my other arm, you're going to call me a hypocrite. At the very least, hopefully, yeah. At the very least, that's what you're going to do. Yeah. Hopefully, well, hopefully, you're going to call Tammy and the leaders, call Tammy and the leaders of the church and say, "Hey, we need to do something about this." You know. No, seriously, yeah. And I think that for some of these people nowadays, if you try to compare these Jewish leaders who who were trying to resist the gospel of Christ and the true gospel of Christ, so they could keep whatever. Mm -hmm. People who are godly now or think they're godly and excuse sin is mm -hmm. what we're seeing in the church. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it may be just a niche. Yeah. Yeah. In some cases, but, in some cases is why. But still, yeah, I mean and, and the and see the thing of it is, if it's just a niche and if it's just a dress, yes, that's bad. it's gonna it's gonna get yeah. get get further and further. I had a I had a friend that had been part of two churches. Uh left two churches, one one, the pastor uh, was caught fooling around and they canned him, but things didn't get any better, so he left. The next church he went to, they caught the pastor fooling around and the leadership didn't want to do anything about it. They actually was, well, God, God's going to work it all out. You know. Well, God's got leaders that he uses to work things out, you know. Uh, so There's guidance on that in the Bible, too. I'm sorry? There's guidance on that in the Bible, too. I, I, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Very clear. Very clear. Very guidance. clear. You know, no no, no wiggle room anywhere. Don't suffer these fools. Go you do know. this, 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 and this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so you know, he says, turn the grace of our God into lewdness and to deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, a Jew, just like Paul, is talking to people that were trying to deny the deity of Jesus Christ. And so here in this, in this phrase, the only Lord Jesus Christ, the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ, he, he's setting them up as co-equal and co-eternal and, and the same. Okay? Uh, verse 4, have you guys got anything in your commentaries that uh, you want to, that, that might add some light to this? Or? Galatians 2, verse 4. Galatians 2, verse 4. Real quick. There's a reference in my Bible about, the, the, about Titus and when Paul and Barnabas and Titus went back to Jerusalem after 14 <laughs> years preaching to the Gentiles, they went into Jerusalem to the Jewish leaders and they ran into this where they ran into these false brethren. And these, and that because the false brethren on earth brought in, came and privately to spy out our liberty that we have in Christ Jesus and bring us back into bondage, which I assume is the law, because chapter uh, verse 3 says Titus was not circumcised. Mm -hmm. And they didn't like that. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a good passage. One of one of the commentaries I read, I, I read I reference that that exact same thing. Yep, privately sneaking in the spy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and that just goes to show you, you know, that was the church of Jerusalem. Yeah. You know, so that that allows us to see that, you know, as, as big a city as Jerusalem was, we, we, we think sometimes that it was just one church with, with one, some of these cities was one church with one pastor. You know, they, they, were, they were probably, in that day and time, they were more like house churches, like synagogues. And so with as many as you have there, you know, sometimes, I mean, that, that's, that's like our denomination, Southern Baptist Convention. We don't, the, 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 the leadership in Nashville, they don't hear everything that's going on until it's brought to their attention. When it's brought to their attention, they, they, they deal with it. The, the way the scripture says, says we need to deal with it. Uh, anything else on that? Um, my Bible refers to Second Peter chapter two, verse one. Okay. It says, "But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, yep. who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, yeah. and bring on themselves swift destruction." 
and many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of the truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. Yeah, that's a good passage. You get read up. I, 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 I referenced it, but I didn't read the whole thing. And, okay. and basically that, yeah, that's, I mean, Paul was admitting that, that they're going to, that they're going to infiltrate, you know. But verse 3, by covetousness they will exploit you with deceptive words. Okay, I get that. Right. For a long time their judgment has not been idle. In other words, God God sees it and He's going to deal with it. Okay. The, 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 the ju- it might not it might not come right then and there, mm-hmm. but it's not idle because it's going to come. See, their English to me is. Bad. Yeah. Oh yeah. Some, yeah. It, it's it's tough sometimes. Yeah. It's tough sometimes, uh, especially with the old King James. Uh, yeah, it's tough because the sentence structure and all of the Aramaic yeah, all. and all and in the Greek is entirely different from the English. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then you gotta. It's like anything, you have idioms and stuff or things that were common in that language in that day, but they don't translate well to what we do now. It's just like the old hymns, you know, how great thou art, instead of art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Using old terms and stuff. Yeah, I was trying to think of it, but there's another hymn that I know has got several, several words in it that, well, it's, that, that it's most holy, people... Holy, holy. Holy, 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 he has got all this, you know, the red yeah. cherubim and the seraphim and all <laughs> Yeah, and people are like, well, what are, yeah, what are, what are those? And they talk about the, the diadems, which are the, the crowns, yeah. you know, but, yeah. you know, yeah. it is what it is. You got to, you got to study. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Study to show yourself approved. Uh, then now it's moving on to, to verse five. I might not even get through all this tonight. He says, but I want to remind you, though. Uh, you once knew this, uh, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed those who did not believe. Now, what, what he means here when he says, but I want to remind you, though you once knew this, it, it, it isn't that it was that it vaporized from their brain. He's basically saying, go back to the scriptures. You knew this. You, you know this. You may have let them lead you astray, but, but you know this is, is the correct way. Uh, what's going to happen here in verses 5, 6, and 7, Jews going to show three groups of apostates uh, that, that God has dealt with. First of all, right here, speaking about uh, uh, leaving, saving people out of the land of Egypt, uh, he's talking about the Israelites, the Israelite rebels in the wilderness. You know, for 40 years they wandered because that generation, if I remember, uh, Elaine, Pastor Carol, any of y'all, if you remember correctly, Correct me. I think the original journey from a straight line shot from from Israel to uh, to the Promised Land was maybe maybe two weeks. Uh, two weeks to a month. Yeah, so, yeah. It was a really relative short period of time, but because of their rebellion, God caused them to wander in the wilderness for forty years until that generation of unbelievers, if you will, passed away. Uh, so God delivered everybody out of Egypt, but not everybody got into the promised land. And that's a, that's a, if you will, a picture of salvation. God has made a way of deliverance for everybody, but not everybody is going to accept it. Not everybody is going to repent and by faith ask, uh, ask Jesus Christ to save them. Yeah. And then in, in, uh, Moving on to verse 6, he says, The angels uh, who, who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode, he has reserved an everlasting change under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Now, this one we can, we can spend some time on. Uh, and I probably won't get through it because I've got 654. This is talks about, excuse me, the angels who did not keep their proper domain. The way I understand and of the angels who did not keep their proper domain, in other words, stay where they were supposed to have stayed in heaven. Now, the way I understand the scriptures, and I'm willing to be corrected if I'm wrong, there are two groups of angelic beings that were cast out of heaven. One group is still free to aid Satan, to help Satan. And we read about that in Matthew chapter 8, 
where Jesus cast demons into a herd of swine. I won't read that whole passage. But when, when, the, uh, when, when, when Jesus cast some demons out of a possessed man, the, the demons said, would, would bid us, according to the old King James, bid us to enter the swine. And he allowed them to go into the swine, and then the swine ran off the cliff. So, that's the, so there's a group of angels that, that are allowed, that they're helping Satan right now. But according to Genesis chapter 6, 1 through 4, this group, we're seeing that, that, that he has reserved an everlasting chains under the darkness for the judgment of the great day. There's a group uh, in the references, Genesis 6, 1 through 4, where we, we read that the sons of God saw the daughters of men and they, they, they left heaven, took on human form and for lack of a better term, mated with the females. And the Bible references that's where you got the race of giants and, and, and super people. Now, some believe that the sons of God refer to the ungodly line of Cain. If you remember, Cain was exiled. You know, he, he was sent away. Some scholars believe that that's what the reference is to. I don't agree with that because... Uh, Cain, with Cain being punished and banished, he couldn't be considered a son of God based on John 1.12. As many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. Cain rebelled against God's way of approaching him. And he was a man which men never really crossed into angels that I'm aware of in the scripture. Right, right. We are heirs of God and right. above the angels. Right. Yep. So the angels in, in <clears throat> view here might be the two groups of angels yeah. you're speaking yeah. of. And, 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 and so we need to see that also though that scriptures, scripture does not teach anywhere that angels are sexless. You know, we, we do read according to the gospels that they do not marry. Remember that when the, the religious leaders approached Jesus, uh, uh, you know, about, well, this woman had all the, if I'm, I hope I'm not combining two different stories. Uh, well, 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 you know, this woman had, I think, seven, seven men as her husband. Who's her husband going to be in, in, uh, in, in, in heaven? And he said, they're, he said, they will be like the angels and that they're not given in marriage. It just says, it just says that angels don't marry. It doesn't say that they're sexless. Now, and then every reference we see to a Bible, contrary to uh, what's her name years ago, uh, and that, that TV show. Uh, That's uh, fine angel. Oh, right. Virgin, Virgin Mary. Mary. No, the, the, end of the TV show where she was an angel. Touched by an angel. Touched by an angel. You know, contrary to, to, to popular, sculpt, or popular culture, nowhere in the scripture does it refer to an angel as being a woman. Every angel, uh, Gabriel, uh, Michael, in fact, I think they're the only two that, that, are, that are named by name in the scripture. They're men. Whenever an angel appears, uh, uh, as a man. They, they, they appear as a man. They appear to Joshua uh, as a man before the battle of Jericho. Appeared to Abraham uh, and, and Sarah as, as men. Appeared at Sodom and Gomorrah as men. Appeared in front of the donkey. And yeah, the donkey leader off the road was that king. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What was what was I didn't I didn't hear that. I think there's a third one, third reference to a male angel in the Bible. Yeah, oh, uh, the name Satan. Well, Lucifer. Satan. Well, you're right. Well, Satan, but yeah. no, yeah, yeah, I, I just like yeah. Lucifer and Satan was something. Man. Yeah. Yeah. He I, I'm think, I, and I'm thinking maybe is it and maybe he isn't named, but there's an. Uh, I'm I'm thinking in Daniel. When the angel came to Daniel and said, "I was delayed because I was," he, he, he was wrestling one of Satan's demons, and it might not have given him, might not have given him his name, but it might have said the angel over such and such a such and such an area. I have to go back and, and look that up. Uh, so, so you know, so to but me, in the from, host of angels, there could be female angels saying, "I mean, it doesn't right. say that they're not right." But, you know, we, uh, to me, I, I, I defer to the scriptures, and the scripture has always referred to them as, as male. 
Uh, so it very easily could be that these demons, uh, these demonic angels that are in everlasting chains under darkness are, are those angels, are those angels that became men in Genesis chapter 6. And they used that terminology, sons of God. Sons of, yeah, yeah, because they were, and, and see what a lot of folks don't realize is, is uh, we don't, I, I want to be careful how I word this. Angels have free will. If they if they didn't have free will, Satan would not have said, I'm going to ascend to the highest. If angels didn't have free will, a uh, host of the angels wouldn't have made the, the decision to, to follow him when they were when they were cast down. And and so this this, this verse here, verse six, it, it is speaking of these angels that uh, became men. In a Genesis chapter six, uh, you guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna quit there as far as moving on. But do, do you guys have anything in your commentaries that might add might add to this? I'm still confused. <laughs> the passage in Joel that uses that same terminology, but the angels who sang, the sons of God, mm -hmm. that terminology. Okay, okay, that that's good. I need to write that one down. Uh, well, God said to Job, why were you when all the sons of God sang at the creation? Yes. That's what he said. Yeah. Question. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you, Pastor. Anybody else? Okay. So there's angels that go beside Satan, or with Satan. I'm sorry? There's... Yeah, there are angels that there left angels with Satan. The yeah. left with Satan, yes, yes. But they're here with oh, Satan. Yes. yes. Okay, the yes. demons. Yes. And the other ones are where? You said they're. They're already they're, they're in the you know I, after all these years I'm still getting confused. They're in Hades. Yes. Okay. They're they're in Hades bound in chain until the day of judgment, and then they'll be cast into the lake of fire. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, angels well, have a will. I don't want to have a free will when I get to heaven. Sure well, but, but, well but, but see then, every if you will, everything will be consummated, if yeah. you will. The church will be, con the bride will be consummated with the groom. Yeah. And our, our, our free will, if you, if you will, if you want to call it that, is going to be perfected. Yeah. It, it's going to be, we will have, we'll the, have the will of We God. will have the mind of Christ. When we're, yeah, yeah, and one of my struggles, and I'll, I'll close with this, one of my struggles when I was a young Christian was, okay, well, what if somebody starts something back up again? I'm like, and, and, it, and it took up, I took my pastor showing me in the scriptures, once this is all over with, it's done with, it's done for, God, you know, when, when we're in heaven with, 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 with the mind of Christ, that rebellion has been put down once and for all. Let me back up. That rebellion, man's sinful rebellion, Satan's sinful rebellion, has been put put down once and for all. And we're going to have the mind. There it is. We're going to have the mind of Christ. And so we won't have thoughts like that anymore. Amen. I'm going to be out. So in verse six. That really bothers me. Where it says, "Angels who did not keep their proper domain and left their own abode." He has yes. reserved in everlasting change under darkness. That under everlasting change under darkness. That's Hades. That's Hades. And that's is Hades, Hades so, hell? It, it is. It's, it's a. It's not purgatory. Right. But it is the abode of the dead until the judgment comes. Some folks believe it's, it's also called the uh, the bottomless pit. Yes. Um, that kind of thing. It, uh, the place where. Those folks were in Abraham's bosom, and the rich man, he could see them, mm -hmm. but there was a great gulf fixed between yes. them. Yes. And that great gulf is the place where the angels are chained. Yeah. Yeah. But it, where, it, where was Lazarus? La okay. Uh, that's what gets confusing because hell, the bottomless pit, and the lake of fire yes. is used so interchangeably. It is. Yes. In, in the Old Testament, Hades was the abode of the dead. Yes. Hades contained two compartments. Yes. One compartment was known as the bosom of Abraham. Yes. That's where the Old Testament believers went. That's where Lazarus went. 
and Hades was the compartment where the unsaved were sent. I'm talking about the Lazarus that asked to be forgiven. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. He, yeah, he went. He when he died, the Bible tells us he went to Lazarus' bosom. Or okay. Abraham's bosom. Yeah, Abraham's bosom. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. What happened according to Scripture when Jesus died and was resurrected? Pastor, help me remember. I can't remember what book this is in. But it, but it says that he led the he led captivity. Captivity, captivity, captivity. Yeah, I think it's is it Romans. I uh, you see the Romans or Corinthians. Yeah. Uh, in other words, when when it said he preached captivity to the captives. In other words, he went to Hades. Yes. Told everybody. And this is my paraphrase. Told everybody it is finished. My my work of salvation is done took the Old Testament believers that were in Abraham's bosom yes. to heaven to be with him, but the ones that were in the 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 the, 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 compart the, the Hades compartment for the unbelievers, they are there along with these angelic beings until the day of judgment. Why was Lazarus, and I'm confused, I'm sorry, but I thought Lazarus was, that, was asking about the water because he was... No, it was, the, remember, it was a rich man that rich died. Man, yeah. Oh, and he was he sat at Lazarus. So Lazarus man. sat at his table. Okay. And and the and the rich man the rich man said, well, you know, would, Father Abraham, would you please send Lazarus to to to, to dip okay. his tongue, or dip, or dip his finger in the water to touch my tongue? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good question. You don't you don't learn if you don't ask. Right. Okay. I uh, tell you what. Let me pray, and we will dismiss. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. Lord, we thank you for the rain. I hope it's not just a, a sudden downpour that's going to stop. It's going to be a steady rain to soak up the land. Lord, we thank you for what we learned tonight. Help us to help us to take it to heart and use it to transform us more into the image of Jesus. Father, I pray that unless we're uh, uh, by divine appointment hindered, gathered together uh, Sunday morning to worship you and to lift up the name of Jesus and be with us as we go our own way and keep us in your care. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.